we have to stop the whole notion that there are certain things that are contrary to our, our democracy that we're for. The idea of saying that you, uh, I didn't win the election, when every court in the land, every court in the land, I don't know, 20 appeals, said, including this conservative Supreme Court, said we won. The idea of having a, a loyalty pledge from all the folks who are in a Republican, MAGA, not all Republicans, but the MAGA Republicans, saying that no, we lost the election, and flaming the people. What will, can you and what will you do, at, at least things you can control to lower down the temperature, the rhetoric out there? Continue to talk about the things that matter to the American public. It matters whether or not you accept the outcome of elections. It matters whether or not you, for example, talk about how you're going to deal with the border instead of talking about people as being vermin. And all. I mean, those things matter. That's the kind of language that is inflammatory. I've never seen a circumstance where you ride through certain rural areas of the country and people have signs there, stand, big Trump signs with a middle sign saying F Biden and a little kid standing there putting up his middle finger. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that is just inflammatory and a kind of viciousness. It's a very different thing to say, look, I really disagree with Trump's the way he takes care of taxes, the way he has wants a five trillion dollar tax cut for people who make a lot of money next time around. Doesn't focus on working class people. Well, those are policy issues, and, and we well, took our history as, as a, a country that can thoroughly hash out those right. issues. And, that's, and if you notice, what do I talk about with him? The policy issues where he's where he's dividing the country. The policy issues are related to democracy. And, uh, another question, if I can, about uh, Saturday. Of course, the, the former president was wounded. One of his supporters died. A couple more people were seriously injured. Was this a massive security failure? I have had two meetings in the Situation Room with all the, all the intelligence communities, the FBI, Secret Service Center, and I've, all, I've asked for a totally independent analysis. And we'll see what happens when that, when that comes back. Do you, have, are you, are you, do you have confidence in the Secret Service? Do you feel safe? I feel safe with the Secret Service, but look, and you saw that the, what we did see was the Secret Service who responded risked their lives in responding. They're ready to give their lives to the president. The question is, should they have anticipated what happened? Or should they have done what they needed to do to prevent this from happening? That's a question that's, that's an open question. Is it acceptable that you have still not heard, at least publicly, from the Secret Service director? Well, I've heard from them. But have you heard from her publicly? Publicly, I've sat down in the situation room downstairs. The Secret Service, the FBI, the National Security Agencies, the Homeland Security, all the major elements. And there's two pieces of this, too. And it's, it's not an excuse, it's just an ordinary explanation. There's a major piece of this relates to domestic uh, local law enforcement. They play a large role. And so there's the different competent. I'm not saying they weren't competent either. I'm just saying it's a complicated process. And what has changed, by the way, Lester, is, <clears throat> you know me, I'm, I like to meet people. I like to walk out, shake hands, move, look at people in the eye, see what they're thinking. It's really curtailed that ability on my part and everybody's part. And so, because there's a heightened notion that when you say there's nothing wrong with going to the Capitol, breaking in, threatening people, a couple of cops dying, hanging up, putting up a noose of gallows for, for the, vice, the former vice president. And, you, and so somehow, you, and then you say you're going to forgive people for that, you're going to pardon them, that there was just a normal response. That is not, I have my entire career voted against him, railed against him, moved against the idea of violence is never appropriate. Never, 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 never in politics. All right, I want to ask you about some other developing news today. And Judge Cannon dismissed the documents case, as you may have heard, in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, can I first get your reaction to that? I'm not surprised. It comes from the immunity decision the Supreme Court ruled on, and Clarence Thomas, in his dissent, said that independent prosecutors appointed by 
the attorney general aren't legit. And, uh, but uh, I had an independent prosecutor look at me. They spent months on my going to, and I was totally cooperative. And now in my house, and there were, I don't know, the last time in, there were like 10, 12 agents in my house for nine hours on a company, going through every single thing I had as appropriate. And they looked at me and concluded I didn't do a damn thing wrong. Based upon which the case was thrown out, I find specious because I don't agree with Clarence Thomas, the dissent, and or the Supreme Court decision on immunity. In light of this decision, the delay in the Georgia case, the Supreme Court decision on immunity, which you referenced, the former president has seen a series of legal wins recently. You've, you've actively campaigned on his legal woes. Can you do anything like that anymore? Well, sure. I can talk about what I think is appropriate. What I think is appropriate. I think the Supreme Court made a terrible decision. I think the justices he appointed have, in fact, been the most conservative. And I, I would argue, if you took survey constitutional scholarship, it, they seem out of touch with what the founders intended. We knew this was going to be a close race from the moment he announced. The idea that we are in a situation where, if you look at all the polling data, the polling data shows a lot of different things, but there's no wide gap between us. It's essentially a toss-up race. And I think one of the arguments that can make, you have the most successful presidency of any president in modern history, maybe since Franklin Roosevelt. Passed more major legislation, no one thought could get done. We're able to put together consensus. We're able to unite NATO. We're able to deal with foreign policy. Why don't you just decide to rest on, that, on those laurels? And the answer is because the job's not finished. Do you feel like you've weathered the storm? On, on this issue of whether you should be on the ticket or not? Look, 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee in the Democratic Party, okay? I listen to them. Lester, look, why don't you guys ever talk about the 18, the 28 lies he told? Where, where are you on this? Why did the press ever talk about that? 28 times confirmed he lied in that debate. I had a bad, bad night. I wasn't feeling well at all. It, and I had been, without him, I screwed up. The, the idea that you may or may not have seen what some of these other folks have seen, you know, the same. I have to see, I was there. <laughs> I have to see, it. I was there. And by the way, seriously, you won't answer the question, but why did the press talk about all the lies he told? Well, I didn't anything about that. We have, we have reported many of the issues that no, you have in that debate. No, you haven't. We'll provide you with them. God, oh, God love you. Okay. <laughs> President Obama put out a statement after the debate, but should he and Michelle Obama be doing more to express their confidence in you? No, they, they're helping me. They've helped me from the beginning. They're, this is my job to get this done. Have you talked to him recently about this? I haven't talked to him in a couple weeks. Have you, have you talked to him since this issue came to light, since the debate? I don't think, I may have, I don't think so. Who do you listen to on deeply personal issues, like the decisions whether to stay in the race or not? Me. Look, I've been doing this a long time. The idea that I'm the old guy, I am, I'm old. But I'm only three years older than Trump. Number one. And number two, my mental acuity has been pretty damn good. I've got more done than any president has in a long, long time in three and a half years. So I'm willing to be judged on that. I understand. I understand why people say, God, he's 81 years old. Whoa. What's he going to be when he's 83 years old or 84 years old? It's a legitimate question to ask. When former President Trump named his vice presidential pick, J.D. Vance, what does that tell you, uh, his qualities? What does that tell you about uh, former President Trump's values in terms of who he will surround himself with in the next administration should he win? J.D. Vance has, has adopted the same policies, no exceptions on abortion, making sure that he supports of the new $5 trillion tax cut that Trump wants to give in the next administration. Signing on to the whole notion of whether or not we're going to, he says there's no climate change. 
It's happening. I mean, he signed on to the to the Trump agenda, which he should if he's running with Trump. Mr. Trump said he's giving you a chance to redeem yourself, basically the idea of engaging in another debate. Um, well, we're going to have another debate. Yeah, you're going to have one in September that's on the books. Would you be open to doing one in the, you know, in the next few weeks? I'm going to debate him when we agreed to debate. Is there, is there a sense of wanting to get back on the horse? I'm on the horse. Where have you been? I've done 22 major events and thousands of people, overwhelming crowds, a lot happening. I'm on the horse. What I'm doing is going out and demonstrating to the American people that I have command of all my faculties, that I don't need uh, notes, I don't need teleprompter. I can go out and answer any questions at all. And I stood there when, when NATO was in town, I stood there for an hour and answered questions. If you were to have continue to run and, and be officially nominated, what happens if you have another episode like we saw during the debate? I don't plan on having another for us on that level. All right. Mr. President, it's always good to talk to you. Good to see you. Thank you for making some time for us. Sometimes come and talk to you about what we should be talking about. All right. Okay, the issues. Always happy to talk.